So, the legendary Sani. We know their names. We know we love them. But what do we really know about them? Well, if you've watched my video on Tsunade already, then you know a fair amount more than the average person. But that was only part one, and this is part two. So with no further ado, I give to you part two, Orochimaru. Come on, that rhyme alone deserved a like, a subscribe, and a noti bell. Please and thank you. This is going to be a long video. So strap in because there's a lot of information to learn here. So let's open these videos in the way that we always open these videos by answering the easiest question. Who is Orochimaru? Orochimaru is a member of the legendary Sanin, a teammate of Tsunade and Jiraiya, a disciple of Heroes and Sarutobi. A man or a woman or a genderless being, depending on which iteration of Orochimaru we're talking about, who is obsessed with the notion of immortality. But why are they obsessed with this immortality? Well, believe it or not, it's actually for a relatively good reason. Orochimaru's main goal in life is to discover all of the secrets of the world. Essentially, Orochimaru craves to have every question that could be prosed be answered. And it's not necessarily that Orochimaru wants to live forever. Orochimaru just wants to live long enough to accomplish this feat. And over the duration of this video, you'll realize that it's possible that maybe his motivations weren't necessarily evil. It's just that a lot of the questions that need to be answered if you're going to cover the entirety of human knowledge are gonna require you to dirty your hands a bit. I got hot. Again, I don't know why I keep trying to film YouTube videos in a sweatshirt. But before we get to Orochimaru's end game, let's get to where he began. Orochimaru is an orphan. We don't know how his parents died or even if they were shinobi. We just know that they died when he was about 10 years old. And at that point, he was entrusted to Hiruzen Sarutobi. So say what you will about Hiruzen not raising Naruto. I guess he was kind of scorned by the fact that the first kid he tried to raise literally turned into a snake monster. That being said, the fact that Orochimaru took to being a ninja so naturally Naturally, we can pretty much assume that his parents were most likely ninjas. I say that he took to being a ninja very naturally because Hiruzen states that he thinks Orochimaru is a once in a generation prodigy. Even with Jiraiya, who turned out to be a legendary Sanin, and the granddaughter of the Senjus, Hashirama, he still stood out as the brightest amongst that team. But unfortunately, this talent didn't convey over to his personality. Tsunade states that even as a child, Orochimaru had an incredibly twisted personality that was evil and conniving. Tsunade goes on to say that he was most likely this sadistic monster because of the loss of his parents. However, we don't know that for sure. He could have just been born bad. But what we do know for sure is that while visiting his parents' gravestone with Hiruzen Sarutobi, he found the skin of a white snake. And it's at this point that Hiruzen explained to Orochimaru that white snakes in Konoha represented fortune and rebirth. And while Hiruzen might have thought that this was just kind of a passing comment to impart a little bit of hope into Orochimaru, it actually set the seed in his mind to want to study forbidden jutsu and answer all of the questions of the universe. Essentially, by seeing that there was a possibility that he could bring his parents back to life with this omen of rebirth, he wanted to see if there was a way to do that, which sparked the flame. At least that's what Orochimaru tells us. Jiraiya theorizes that Orochimaru headed down this path of trying to fill his head with as much knowledge as possible to help drown out all the bad memories he had from his childhood. The next thing we know about Orochimaru is the second great ninja war. Essentially, we know that Orochimaru, Jiraiya, and Tsunade came face to face with Hanzo of the Salamander. And Hanzo of the Salamander massacred everybody the leaf brought except for Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru who were left standing. Because of this ability to not get murdered by him, he dubbed them the Legendary Sani, which just means the three legendary ninja. After the somewhat stalemate, the legendary, well, newly dubbed Legendary Sani, headed back to Konoha. And it's at this point that they encountered the Ame orphans, you know, Yahiko, Nagato, and Konan. And in kind of the true first showing of Orochimaru's, I guess, well, true colors, he says that they should pity kill the orphans to make sure they don't have to live in this now destroyed hellscape that is the village hidden in the rain. But instead, Jiraiya decides to stay behind and raise them. This essentially disintegrates the team of Tsunade and Orochimaru and Jiraiya under Hiruzen. And because of that, it gives Orochimaru a lot more freedom because he's no longer being sent out on three-man missions. Also, the war has made him even hungrier for answers to questions. And so after the war, at least in the anime, this isn't a manga canon moment, Orochimaru sneaks into the hidden cloud 
in order to get Giyuki to rampage. Essentially, Orochimaru has heard that the Jinchuriki of Giyuki, Blue B at this time, Killer B's predecessor, doesn't have a good control over Giyuki. So Orochimaru dresses up as Blue B's doctor and gets him to take Genjutsu-inducing pills. And because at that time, Giyuki actually had the same ability as Shukaku the One Tails, that if it's Jinchuriki, fell asleep, they would use that as an opportunity to take over the Jinchuriki's body and rampage. So, with Gyuki now rampaging across the Hidden Cloud, the third Raikage and the fourth Raikage have to fight Gyuki, and it's at this point that the third Raikage slices off one of Gyuki's horns. It's then shown in the anime that Orochimaru steals that horn in order to extract Blue Bee's DNA from it. The reason to steal this horn was twofold. One, he would have Blue Bee's DNA in case he ever wanted to reincarnate him with Edo Tensai, in two to better understand the relationship between Jinchuriki and Tailed Beast. But let's get back to canon moments. After the conclusion of the Second Great Ninja War, Hirozen was now full-time Hokage. Tsunade was off gambling with all of her Senju money, and Jiraiya was still in the Hidden Rain, so Team Hirozen had been officially disbanded. Now being alone for the a millionth time in his life, Orochimaru took this moment to join the Anbu. This is a part of his life that's not very well documented because for some reason, the anime and the manga seem to not flesh it out that well. But Orochimaru joins the Anbu in order to work in the route directly under Donzo. And it was here that he met Anko Mitarashi. And that wasn't the only person he met while in the route. No, in the route, he also met Kabuto. He met Kabuto while accompanying Donzo to a trip to a former member of the Root's kind of house. Nono Yakushi was a former Root member who had left the Root in order to become a regular Jonin and work in the medical corps. But once you get in, Donzo never really lets you get out. So when Donzo went to her house in order to force her to do a Root mission, she was taking care of Kabuto because she took care of orphans and Kabuto was one of those. And it's at that point that Orochimaru met another person who would be massively important in his life. But the time for Anko and Kabuto has not come yet. No, there is more important things to come between then and now. Like the fact that Orochimaru was almost the fourth Hokage. Usually when people talk about the competition over the fourth Hokage, they make the conversation between Minato and Fugaku Uchiha. But what people don't realize is that Hiruzen wanted it to be Orochimaru. I mean, think about it. Hiruzen raised Orochimaru from when he was 10 years old to a full-grown adult who showed a ton of promise as a ninja. And Orochimaru also wanted to be the fourth Hokage. I mean, he wanted to be the fourth Hokage so he could have uninhibited access to like forbidden scrolls and all of that, but that's neither here nor there. But over time, Hiruzen realized that even though he wants to steer Orochimaru away from the road of evil that he saw him going towards, that he was beyond help. And he made Minato the next successor. And this, uh wasn't great for everyone. Essentially, now that Orochimaru knew that Hiruzen wasn't falling for his tricks anymore, he saw no more reason to associate with the Leaf or to hide his grand intentions. So at this point, he decided, yeah, whatever, I'm just gonna steal 60 children and try and inject them with Hashirama's cells. He was doing this in order to recreate the wood release because the fact that there was only ever one person who could use it aggravated him very deeply. There was no real answer as to why Hashirama could use it and nobody else could. But he didn't do this alone. No, he had Donzo's help. Talk about two guys you would just not want to be stuck in a room with. Donzo and Orochimaru. Not that I have enough latent talent for them to be even remotely interested in me. But here's the crazy part. Is Orochimaru never knew that Yamato existed? Orochimaru thought that all 60 of the children died and deemed the project a failure and left it. But one child survived, one child that Donzo quickly snatched up and threw into the root. And that was Yamato. Why was Yamato the only one to survive? Probably because he was Tsunade's child. Got a video about that right here. But don't get sad for Orochimaru because he later perfected this technique, by the way. Many, many, many years later, he was able to take Hashirama's cells and inject them into Shin Uchiha's Sharingan-infused arm. For those of you who haven't read Shin's light novel or haven't seen Boruto, let me explain who Shin is to you. Shin is a child who was born with the ability to have any foreign matter grafted onto his body. Like, pull off your own finger and then sew it onto him. He would then 
be able to use that finger wherever you sewed it on. Naturally, having a human Velcro board was very interesting to Orochimaru, so he snatched him up and he began to implant Sharingans all over his body for the scientific process of, I don't know, seeing how many eyeballs somebody can have. And once he had sufficiently filled Shin with enough eyeballs, especially in his arm, he actually took Shin's arm off of him, injected Hashirama cells into it, and then slapped that arm onto Donza. Yeah, you know that creepy white arm he has? That's not his arm. That's Shin's arm that Orochimaru grafted onto Donzo. Sorry, it's a new day. That's why the shirt has changed again. Third change. Uh, I, I got a dog. His name is Neutron. Do you love him? Because apparently he loves Kurama because he's been laying on that carpet this, this whole time. Back to Orochimaru though, because Yamato, Donzo, and Shin would not be the last people that he experimented on. In fact, we're now entering the stage of Orochimaru's life that I like to call the trial and error stage. It's at this point that Orochimaru started doing experiments on people he took as prisoners. And many of these prisoners were his fellow Hidden Leaf Shinobi. He used the guise of being a Hidden Leaf Shinobi to lure people into his, I guess, cave so he could sedate them and then use them for experiments. And all of these guinea pigs were to help him create a way to be immortal. And by the end of it, he actually found found a way to accomplish that goal with the living corpse reanimation jutsu. Essentially, this technique allowed him to transfer his consciousness to other people's bodies, which is insane considering the fact that he could simply take over the strongest people that he could acquire and get their abilities. This is why he was so interested in Itachi and Sasuke, because he would be able to use all of their Sharingan abilities, which he hadn't had prior, which would answer a lot of life's questions for him. Problem is that this only works for three years, and then the body starts to degrade and reject him. Unless, of course, he finds the perfect vessel that he will be able to live in for that body's entire lifetime. He thought he had the perfect vessel in Kimimaru, but then Kimimaru came down with a chakra illness that made him too weak for Orochimaru to take over. And then he thought he had it in Sasuke, but Sasuke was able to use the Sharingan on Orochimaru while he was trying to take over his body to actually reverse the fate. But the way that he accomplishes the takeover of somebody else's body is not just like, you know, mind transfer jutsu. No, it's horrific. Essentially, Orochimaru crawls out of his own body in the form of a giant white snake made of many smaller white snakes, and he devours the person he wants to take over. He then envelops their brain and puts them in a, their own mental place plane where they sit for three or so years. But what's awful is that after these three years are up, when Orochimaru goes to another host, he brings the soul of that last host with him to carry forever in that suppressed plane. And when Orochimaru has taken over that new host, he changes their appearance to look like him, and he's able to impart his own unique abilities onto that new host, like having stretchy arms or being snake-like. But we were just talking about Kimimaru, and this is the part of Orochimaru's life where he actually met Kimimaru. While working on a mission in the Hidden Mist, Orochimaru bumped into Kimimaru in the outskirts of the city. Orochimaru had had an eye on Kimimaru for a long time, seeing that he was the last of the Kaguya clan, a clan with a very specific Kekia Genkai that allowed them to use their bones as weapons. And as somebody who liked to collect weird abilities, Orochimaru was very drawn to this sole survivor. And it was actually this connection with Kimimaru that allowed him to find Jugo and then do research on Jugo's Kekia Genkai that allowed him to naturally pull in nature energy. And this Kekia Genkai of Jugo was actually more interesting than the Kimimaru's Kekia Genkai because he wanted to find a way to share this Kekia Genkai with others. So in order to find the source of Jugo, Jugo's Keke Genkai to really get to the base of it in order to figure out how to reverse engineer it and put it on other people, Orochimaru was led to Ryuchi Cave. And for those of you who don't know what Ryuchi Cave is, it is the place where the great white snake sage lives. This is where people go in order to train under the snakes in order to learn snake sage mode. And that's exactly what Orochimaru went there to go do. He went to go understand sage mode and better yet, Senjutsu Chakra. And it's actually at this point in his life that he learned how to perfectly blend nature chakra with his own in order to create Senjutsu Chakra. Problem was, even though he could make the Senjutsu Chakra that makes Sage Mode possible, his vessel wasn't strong enough to take a Sage Mode kind of upgrade, I guess. He was too frail for the power-up, but this failure actually motivated him to do something else with Senjutsu Chakra. 
and that was to accomplish his original goal, finding out how to share this power. And the answer to sharing that power was the Cursed Seal. He tested this kind of new idea of the Cursed Seal on a bunch of Leaf Village shinobi that he had had as prisoner or that were his associates like Anko Mitarashi. And while he was excited for his results, like most of his experiments, most of the people he tested on died. In fact, nine out of the 10 people that he tested on died, Anko being the only survivor, which caused him to create a one in 10 survival rule for the Curseal placement. And once he had identified what he did right with Anko, he then brought his finalized project to Kimimaru in the Sound Village 4. But the problem was now he had these new shiny toys, AKA the Sound 4 with their perfect curse seals, and he realized something. Anko wasn't willing to use her cursed seal. She felt it seeping into her brain and making her lose her sense of self. So Orochimaru actually wiped all of her memories of their relationship and just sent her back to the leaf. This wasn't the end of Orochimaru growing his posse. No, he was actually about to make another very important addition to his team. At this moment, he is still a member of the Root and he actually gets a mission from Donzo. The mission is to go to the Hidden Stone and make sure that Kabuto and Nono, Kabuto now being a spy for the root had killed each other because they had too much information and were becoming major liabilities to the root security essentially no no was a member of the root for a long time then pulled out because she no longer wanted to be a part of that life then she moved to the stone but donzo didn't like that so he sent kabuto to the stone to keep an eye on her so orochimaru did what orochimaru usually does and he schemed and he actually instead of making sure kabuto and no no killed each other just took kabuto to his hideout that hideout which was becoming the cornerstone of a Orochimaru's new actual hidden village, also known as the village hidden in the sound. When he takes Kabuto to the village hidden in the sound, he reveals to him what the Root's plan was for his life, aka use him until he stops being useful and then... In fact, Orochimaru said that I was the one who was sent to kill you, but I saw a little bit of me in you, and therefore I want you as my right hand man. So Kabuto said, well, I guess that sounds better than being dead and said yes. So at this point, Orochimaru was literally building his own hidden village, and yet he is still a shinobi member of the Hidden Leaf. He is a part of the root. He still has a relationship with Hiruzen Sarutobi, the now ex Hokage. But because he wasn't selected to be the fourth Hokage himself, he started to get reckless in his covering up of his crimes. As his experiments on people kept leaving them dead, a trail slowly led to him. And Hiruzen found that trail. In fact, Hiruzen caught him red-handed doing experiments on his own prisoners. But step into Hiruzen's shoes here for a second. This is an orphan that he raised since he was 10 years old. A child he thought had incredible promise and wanted to be the Hokage one day. To him, it was like looking at your son betray you. And he couldn't bring himself to kill Orochimaru even though he knew that was his duty. And trust me, he would have killed Orochimaru. Orochimaru barely beat him 20 years later with a perfectly staged plan. Orochimaru identifies that Hiruzen doesn't have the will to kill him and just leaves the village. In the anime, this part isn't in the manga, but on his way out of the village, he actually bumps into Kakashi, who at this time is only like 12 or 13 years old, even though he is a prodigy and an Ambu captain. Orochimaru is a legendary Sani, the war hero of the second great ninja war. He slaps Kakashi around. But Kakashi actually catches Orochimaru slipping a little bit by planting an explosive tag in one of the snakes that Orochimaru sent out at him and he knew it was going to return back to Orochimaru. When it opens its mouth coming back to Orochimaru, it explodes on him. This severely injures Orochimaru even though Kakashi is passed out. It's at this point that Orochimaru realizes that the jig is up and he goes to all of his hideouts and either destroys or booby traps all of them so nobody can recreate his research or know what he's been doing but kakashi isn't the last person that would see orochimaru before he escaped that person would be jiraiya jiraiya senses that orochimaru is you know fleeing the village and finds him and pleads with him please reconsider i know there's a good heart in there but this plea falls on deaf ears in fact it fell on ears so deaf that orochimaru would then go on to join the akatsuki and when he joined the sakatsuki he was paired with sasori this is actually really cool but unfortunately it's a time period we don't know much about we just know that while Sasori is fighting Grain and Chio in Sakura he says that him and Orochimaru achieved a lot over the years most notably we believe they killed the third Kaze Kage together because Sasori says that he knows nothing about the death of the fourth Kaze Kage Rasa Gara's father who Orochimaru killed to impersonate 
to kick off the Konoha Crush Arc. And they would continue to do great mischievous evil work for years until Itachi joined the Akatsuki. To Orochimaru, Itachi was the perfect vessel. He was powerful. He was young. He had the Sharingan. And so one day when Itachi was alone, Orochimaru tried to take over his body. But Itachi used Tsukiyomi to stop him in his tracks and sliced off his left hand to make sure he couldn't break a finger to break out of the Genjutsu. Orochimaru was able to escape, but he now had to find a new body because his current body didn't have a left hand. But here's the thing, Sasori actually liked Orochimaru as a partner, so he was really hurt when he defected. So Sasori held a grudge, in fact a grudge so deep that when he found out that Kabuto was a spy sent by Orochimaru to keep an eye on the Akatsuki, he sent him back to Orochimaru as a sleeper agent. That's right, Kabuto was like an unintentional triple agent. But Orochimaru being Orochimaru figured out that there was a technique that Sasori used on him to make him said sleeper agent and then undid it. In the anime, Sasori goes looking for Orochimaru and Orochimaru finding out that Sasori is on his trail from Kabuto who has now undone the technique on to thinks that this is a good time to use Edo Tensai. Knowing that Sasori has the third Kazekage puppet, Orochimaru uses this as an opportunity to test Edo Tensai. So he actually uses Edo Tensai on the actual third Kazekage in order to see which is stronger. And the Edo Tensai third Kazekage is much stronger than the puppet. But the problem is that Orochimaru hasn't perfected the brain control seals. And therefore, the third Kazekage is able to break out of Edo Tensai. After this fight, Orochimaru has realized, I know how to stay immortal. I know how to bring back anyone I want to life and control them, what else do I need to find? And it's at this point that he starts looking for basically mythical items. One of Orochimaru's lifelong goals was to find the Sword of Totsuka. The Sword of Totsuka is a magical blade that if you stab somebody with it, it seals them in an entirely different dimension called the world of drunken dreams. Imagine you get stabbed with the sword and you're not just like, ouch, you get thrown into another dimension that makes you feel like you're the dizziest you've ever been for eternity. But he couldn't find the sword of Totsuka no matter where he looked. And that's because it was in Itachi Susano. Ironically, this is a lesson he would learn very soon. But before we get there, we got to talk on his entire relationship with Sasuke. Essentially, after joining the Akatsuki, then leaving the Akatsuki, he leaned into the whole hidden sound thing. So much so that he was actually able to send Hidden Sound Ninja to the Leaf Village's tuning exam. Like, that's the craziest bit to me. People don't realize it was like a full hidden village. Orochimaru not being able to have Itachi settled for Sasuke as the second best. So when he had a shot, he took it. Dressed as a Genin from the Hidden Sound Village, he found Sasuke in the Forest of Death stretched his neck, bit him, and placed a curse seal on his neck. Obviously, this curse seal gave Sasuke power. If you guys are curious about how the curse seal works, I actually explained it in one of my most recent YouTube videos right here. But this power was intoxicating to Sasuke, and slowly but surely, he began to rely on it. And that reliance on that power actually brought Sasuke to Orochimaru to act as a mentor for him. This, of course, being after he defected from the leaf. Ironically, this tends to be how the curse seal works. By using it, you disintegrate your sense of self and the use of Orochimaru's Senjutsu Chakra makes you emotionally reliant on him. And so for years during the time skip, Sasuke acted as Orochimaru's disciple. In fact, a lot of the power that Orochimaru taught Sasuke is what allowed him to pseudo beat Itachi. But obviously we know Orochimaru wasn't doing this out of the good of his heart. No, he was grooming Sasuke to be his permanent and final vessel. He was actually like exuberant about how much progress Sasuke had made because all of that progress was going to be his power soon. Sasuke found out that he was trying to take over his body and so Sasuke killed him. Well, I guess technically he stabbed him in the arm with a Chidori sharp spear and then Orochimaru slithered out of his mouth revealing his true giant white snake form. Sasuke then cuts the snake form up but the problem is Orochimaru's blood when vaporized releases a genjutsu inducing mist. With Sasuke in this Genjutsu Orochimaru started the takeover of his body, but Sasuke was Itachi's little brother and therefore had all of the strengths of Itachi. Sasuke was able to stop the body switch with his Sharingan in the same way that Itachi did years before, except Sasuke took it one step further and actually absorbed Orochimaru. Because of this, Sasuke got access to a bunch of Orochimaru's abilities, but he had to dedicate part of his chakra to keeping Orochimaru's soul suppressed. And that's where he would stay until Sasuke finally found his older brother, Itachi, 
and they fought. You see, Itachi's only reason to fight Sasuke was to drain him of all of his chakra so Orochimaru would show himself. And so at the end of their fight, when Sasuke is depleted of all of his chakra, Orochimaru uses the eight branches technique to climb out of the depleted Sasuke. As he emerges from Sasuke, he revels in the fact that he's now going to have Sasuke's body. But before he can even finish that sentence, he is pierced with the very sword he's been looking for his whole life, the Sword of Totsuka. And you remember what the Sword of Totsuka does? It cast Orochimaru to the realm of drunken dreams. It also had the effect of removing the curse seal from Sasuke. This was Itachi's plan the entire time. Itachi went so far as to kill the little white snakes that Orochimaru leached off his body when he was being sealed with Amaterasu. But unfortunately, it's Orochimaru and he's kind of like a cockroach. He never really dies. So during the war arc, Sasuke kind of identifies that we need somebody who's really good at Edo Tensai to kind of bolster our numbers here. So he finds a scroll in Orochimaru's hideout that kind of reveals the secrets on how to revive him to Sasuke. They're able to do this because there's still the curse seal on Anko, which contains Orochimaru's entire consciousness and genetic material. They transfer that consciousness out of Anko and onto a piece of Kabuto's modified flesh that Jugo is pumping Senjutsu Chakra into. Orochimaru now having been defeated by Itachi and Sasuke and now brought back to life by Sasuke, who now no longer deems him as a threat, realizes that he will never take Sasuke's body. So he tells Sasuke that he's not interested in Toby's war and that he knows he's not strong enough to take Sasuke on anymore. But since he respects the changes that Sasuke has gone through, he promises Sasuke that he'll take him to somebody who has the answer Sasuke is looking for. It's at this point that Suegitsu, Jugo, Sasuke, and Orochimaru head to Konoha to go to the Uzumaki clan mask temple. For the history of the Uzumakis, I just did a YouTube video about him right here. Orochimaru takes one of the masks that the Uzumaki left in Konoha and puts it on his face, invoking the Shinigami to come to his world. Essentially, Orochimaru becomes possessed by the Shinigami. So he cuts open the Shinigami's stomach in order to release the sealed souls from there. These sealed souls are Hiruzen, Minato, Tobirama, and Hashirama. All of these souls are sealed in there because all of those souls were sealed using the Reaper Death technique. If you'll remember correctly, Minato used the Reaper Death seal on Karama at the end of his life, and Hiruzen used the Reaper Death seal on Orochimaru's arms, Hashirama, and Tobirama, which put Orochimaru's arms, Hashirama, Tobirama, Hiruzen, and Minato all in the Shinigami's belly, fighting for eternity. Four Hokage were implanted in four white Zetsu, and in order to avoid death, Orochimaru switched into the body of a white Zetsu. But now, since his arms had been released from the Shinigami, he was at full power. It's at this point that Sasuke makes it clear to the four Hokage that he actually wants to protect Konoha instead of destroying it. And this actually sways Orochimaru. Orochimaru realizes that he's been going about his life the wrong way. And he's actually now so interested in watching Sasuke take this new path that he's decided to save the village in order to make sure all of the lives that were lost to protect it weren't sent to waste. It's at this point that all of them rush to the battlefield where Orochimaru, Suegitsu, and Karin come to the scene of the five Kage who had recently been kind of eviscerated by Madara. Orochimaru orders Kari and Suegitsu to heal Tsunade with the help of Lady Katsuya. Really, without him, Tsunade never would have came back into one piece and then been able to bring all the other five Kage back together. It's at this point that Orochimaru realizes that if Obito's plan succeeds, he will never find all the answers in the universe. So finding Obito's plans inconvenient for his own greater plans, he decides to partake in the war offensively. Orochimaru even went so far in this battle as to immobilize Tobi by biting his neck. And then, you know, the war ends. Yay, we beat Kaguya. Good. But what's truly interesting is after the war's conclusion, the Leaf actually forgave Orochimaru. They identified his change in spirit, mirrored Sasuke's change in spirit, and actually let him go so far as to continue his genetic experiments. He was pardoned for his crimes under the exception that he would be under 24-hour observation by a Leaf Joni. But as long as he didn't do anything suspicious or tried to betray the Leaf, he could even go in and out of Konoha. But what's truly amazing is that many years after the war 
sparks included about five or seven he re-established the village hidden in the sound as a legitimate ninja village it exists in boruto and in boruto he's even gone so far as to make entirely synthetic humans like log and Mitsuki. Synthetic humans, well at least in the case of Mitsuki, who can use snake sage mode perfectly. In fact, Orochimaru and Konoha's relationship is so tight now that he reached out to Naruto to raise his son Mitsuki. And Naruto says yes, thinking that Orochimaru's research will come in handy for Konoha at some point, considering that it's so close to what the Otsutsukis use. I mean, think about the similarities between the curse mark and the Kaira marking. I, it's ridiculous how close they are. And that's it. That's his story. I could go into everything he's done in Boruto, but that would be another 20 minutes. But what I hope I've accomplished with this video is to open your eyes to the fact that Orochimaru is a complex character. He was raised tough and he tried to fill a hole in his heart with knowledge. While that thirst to fill that hole brought him in the wrong direction, very clearly, it's not very different from a lot of other characters we see in Naruto. Both Naruto and Sasuke tried to fill the holes in their hearts with the acquirement of power. Orochimaru was just looking for knowledge. And now that he has his arms back in Boruto and he's also pseudo immortal, he is one of the most powerful people in the leaf, if not the most. He created wood users, sage users, a way for people who don't have sage mode to pull in Senjutsu Chakra. He's probably the smartest person in Naruto. And now he's a good guy, maybe. But you should definitely be a good guy and like this video, subscribe to this page, and hit that noty bell. I'm not saying I'm on Orochimaru's side. I'm not. But I was a scientist.